this morning is growth, spiritual growth. Is spiritual growth important to us as Christians? Amen. Right? And let me give you the background again of this book. This epistle, this letter, was written to the, Asia, to the churches in Asia Minor. Remember, the first letter is, uh, we just finished it not two weeks ago, not too long ago. Are you with me? And uh, when uh, Peter wrote that letter, he encourages the Christians, the churches in Asia Minor, because of the persecution that comes from the outside. And now, this letter was written because Peter is about to die. Basically, he was in Rome right now, in prison, waiting for his death. And did you know, tradition says that uh, when, when they were about to crucify Peter, Peter says, no, I'm not worthy to be crucified like my Lord. So, he was crucified upside down. Instead, this way, it's the other way around. Amen. And so, he wrote this letter basically to encourage the churches in Asia Minor and warn them about the false teachers. Are you with me? And so, folks, here in chapter 1, Peter begins by urging them to keep close watch on their personal lives. You see, sometimes if you want to warn someone, that's good. Warn them of the coming danger. But of course, you have to adhere. What I see on Peter is remind them first on their personal walk. Amen. Now, can I remind you this, Christian, this morning? When you come to church, okay, focus on the Lord. Focus on your work, your service, your Christian duty, and your worship to God. Amen. Because if you focus on me or your brothers and sisters in Christ, guess what? You will stumble. You will stumble. I can guarantee you that. That's why people leave church because of that. Because we get so focused on other people. Focus on yourself. Just like Paul says, examine and judge yourself, he says. Amen? Are you with me? And so last week... If you don't mind, it's just going to be a short teaching this morning. But let me read to you again verse 1, okay? And through verse 4, and then I'll jump on verse 5. Simon Peter, a bond servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have obtained like precious faith with us by the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. As His divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness, through the knowledge of Him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Now, remember last week, we have learned the importance of knowing Jesus. This is basically the continuation of that teaching last week. Are you with me? Now, verse 5, look at this. But also, for this very reason, Giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue, knowledge, to knowledge, self-control, to self-control, perseverance, to perseverance, godliness, to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. Oh my. Now I call these seven, are the seven Christian virtues. If you count them, it goes to virtue, knowledge, self-control, perseverance, godliness, brotherly kindness, and love. There's seven of them. Seven Christian virtues. 
But of course, you know me. We have to dissect the Word of God so that you can understand it. Amen. The most important thing for me is for you to understand the Word of God when you come to church. Amen. Now, look at this. It says there in verse 5, but also for this very reason. Now, basically what Peter is saying here is this. Seeing His divine power has given to us that pertain to life and godliness for this very reason, giving all diligence. Now, when the Bible says here, giving all to diligence, it means make every effort. You know, this is how you should do it. Make every effort, every ounce of your energy, you give it to this. Give to this what? Add to your faith. See, notice, folks, verse 5 is very, very technical here. And I want to be technical so that you can understand what Peter is saying here. So basically, remember in, in verse 1, we have obtained like precious faith. And in verse 3, uh, we have been given, or His divine power is available to us to enjoy. And the promises of God, they are available to us. All we have to do is live by them. Remember I told you, just enjoy them. This is all for you Christians. This is right there. It's like all the blessing is there from Akaba. All you have to do is... Get them and enjoy them. Are you with me? And then Peter is saying, but also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add, the word add there, underline it please, it means supply, lavishly, or to furnish. I mean, when you have a new house, when you buy a new house, let's say for those of you first time buyer, you furnish your home. Amen. You add something to it, right? You just don't buy a home and no bed, no furniture. That's okay, but still you enjoy the home, right? But most of us here in this room, most of us, I have seen your homes, they're furnished. Okay, now, add furnish to your faith. Now let me stop here. What faith here? That is the saving faith in Jesus Christ our Lord. Notice, notice folks here. Faith in Jesus what separates Christians from all other people. Did you know that? Can I hear amen to that? Faith in Jesus what separates Christians from all other people. Now notice, faith in Jesus is the first. It's not part of those virtues, but it is the foundation of those seven virtues. Are you with me? Are you with me, therefore, folks? Because it is the foundation of all other qualities in the Christian life. This what brings us into the family of God. That is faith in Jesus Christ. That is foundation. That's why it's not added to those Christian virtues. Are you with me? Now, the reason I say Christian virtues, notice it says add to this faith. Add to your faith in Jesus these seven things. Notice it's like one after the other. It's not like adding. It's like the way we see adding, it's like, uh, okay, let's say you're cooking. Oh, let me add something there to make it tasty or what. No, this is like a telescope. Are you with me? When the telescope, oh, it's the, I can't still see them. Let me stretch it a little bit, right? I don't know what they call those telescopes that has a addition. Okay, whatever. You, you got it, right? Add to your faith is this. Uh, are you, are, but you get it because you're laughing, right? Right? Are you with me? Because there's a telescope that you can buy, it's a single one, but it's stretched, right? It goes beyond, right? It's like that. To your faith, you add this. Now, what is his point here? 
His point is this, that there is something beyond the new birth. Okay? Did you know, if we start from verse 1 through verse 4, you're going to be okay. Because you have faith in Christ Jesus our Lord. But can I say something to you? Peter is teaching us something here. That there is something beyond the new birth. That is spiritual growth. We have to grow, right? Because if a child was born, guess what? If the child, that baby is not growing, that is a abnormal baby. Are you with me? How many of you here in this room want to become abnormal Christian? Will you please raise your hand? Oh, I'm glad no one raised your hand. Praise the Lord. Because what Peter is saying to us is this. When you become born again, you should be a growing Christian also. Can I hear amen to that? Alright, that's what his point there. It is not, or I should say, it is enough to be born into God's family. But you should add to this a spiritual growth. Are you with me? But notice, notice, what Peter is saying here is this. In order for you to grow spiritually, it demands diligence and earnestness. Do you see that? Because it says there in verse 5, but also for this very reason, giving all diligence. It demands diligence. It, it demands discipline. It demands earnestness. Because let me tell you this, brothers and sisters, are you ready for your application? <laughs> Lazy and careless Christian does not grow. Oh, can you put that in your note? Lazy Christian or careless Christian and careless Christian does not grow. Can I hear amen to that? Amen. Oh, amen. You know, I thought I'm going to go to church to be encouraged. How come it's like this? Because you know what, folks? We need to hear this kind of message. It's not just feel good, we come to church. No, we have to be challenged by the Holy Spirit. Amen? amen. There's no lazy Christian. There's no hope. There is, but there. Guess what? They're just going to be carnal or immature Christian. Are you with me? Do you want to be a normal Christian again? Okay. <laughs> Praise the Lord that you don't want that. Are you with me? So make every effort. Give every ounce of your energy to add, to supply lavishly to your faith these seven Christian virtues. And when you do this, you all become, you're all going to become a Christian giants. Amen. Now what are these virtues then? Then, number one is this. So add to your faith, virtue. Now we have been studying the Greek word, arete. Do you remember that? That is arete. Virtue here means Moral excellency, a virtuous course of thoughts, feelings, and actions. That's it. Moral excellence. Now to this arete, to this virtues, add what? Knowledge. That is number two. Knowledge here is different from the knowledge that we talked about last week, that epignosis. This knowledge here means just gnosis. Knowledge here though, it is a moral discernment, discernment of right from wrong. We Christians should have a discernment, right? We should know what right from wrong, right? Number two or number three. So from faith, you add virtue, you add knowledge, you add self-control. Now, self-control means to have one's passions under control. 
that you master, that you master your passion. Are you with me? Your desire, that you have a control, that you, let's say you crave, your flesh is craving for something that is not good, that you have control on that. You master that. Amen? That is self-control. And number four, you add perseverance. Now your telescope is stretching now. Are you with me? Are you with me? Right? It started work. Faith. From faith, it started on faith. Then you added that telescope, if you would. Virtue, knowledge, self-control. Now perseverance, we also know as patience. Right? Or endurance. Kind of like that. Now the Greek word for that is this. Staying under. Wow, what is that supposed to mean? When I look at the original word, it says staying under. I'm like, what is that? And you listen to me on this, folks. Staying under means living Christian, living a Christian life, even it gets tough. That you still persevere. Are you with me? In the New Testament, it refers to constancy or steadfastness, endurance under the greatest trials and sufferings without giving up or giving in. Now, can I give you an illustration on that? Let's say you say you're a Christian right now and then you go through some tough times or some trials or suffering and then uh, that's it. I give up. Or for some, you get tempted or what, and you give in to that temptation. Now, you are not exercising perseverance then. Are you with me? That's what it meant there. Now, to perseverance, you add godliness. Now, godliness refers to piety towards God. Piety towards God, meaning man's obligation of reverence toward God. That is godliness. Now notice folks, the first five virtues pertain to one's life and his relationship to God. Have you seen that? It is all about you Christians. It pertains to your inner life and your relationship to God. Then the last two of these Christian virtues, it relates to others. Are you ready? Look at number six. Number six is brotherly kindness. You know the Greek word for that? It's Philadelphia. That's why Philadelphia is the brotherly, brotherly love. There you go, right? That is Brotherly kindness is Philadelphia. What is that supposed to mean here? A fervent, practical caring for other fellow, especially fellow Christians. Okay? A fervent, practical caring for others, I should say. Especially our fellow Christians. Right? And by the way, folks, it's Thanksgiving and we, we have those uh, packages. That is... Brotherly kindness. Applying the brotherly kindness and love right there. Now, folks, there's a passage in 1 John chapter 4, verse 20. It says there, if someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he's a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? Wow, man. Woo! This is heavy here, folks, right? And you know what, Christians? These attributes, the people outside these walls, they must see this in us and through us. Amen? Now, let go back, go back to 1 Peter, right? Now, the number seven is this, love. Now, from Philadelphia to Agape, 
That is the divine love of God. Now, agape, where we get our English word charity. Now, the reason I say that is Philadelphia, those Thanksgiving packages that we have, but it also, those are agape also. Now, let me explain that to you, what charity is. From brotherly kindness, or I should say brotherly kindness is concerned for other or others' needs. While love, or the agape, is desiring, or desire, or how can I say this? Uh, desiring the highest good for others. This is the kind of love God exhibits toward sinners. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believed in Him will not perish but have everlasting life. Now, the love here is more than brotherly love now. It's for everybody now. Whether Christian or non-Christian. Are you with me on that, folks? So now, <laughs> just don't sleep on me on this because I'm a little bit slow today. You know, I want to be technical because I want you to understand this. Because this is for you and me. We are not just a born-again believer, but we are a born-again believer that is growing in Christ Jesus our Lord. That is growing in His grace. Amen? Can I hear amen to that? You don't want to become a carnal Christian. You don't want to become an immature Christian. What you want is from the day that you were born, spiritually speaking, you should take off and start growing and growing and growing in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen? Now, in saying that, that people around you, that they can see these things in you. Are you with me? But to achieve a spiritual growth means discipline. Discipline. It demands discipline, diligence, and earnestness. Are you with me on that? Now, verse 8. For if these things, what things? <laughs> Those seven things that you added to your faith, okay? For if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, you see that knowledge there? That is not gnosis anymore. That is epignosis. What is that epignosis again? A personal, intimate relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. It's not just knowledge. Are you with me? Because knowledge, when it comes to knowledge about Jesus, devil, the devil and the demons, they have more knowledge because they have seen Jesus up there in heaven. Amen? Are you with me? But here's a personal relationship with Jesus. Say amen to that. Just to make me feel good. Oh, thank you, Lord. Wow, we're fired up on that. For these things, again, are yours. Now let me stop there. Are yours. What things? These seven Christian virtues are yours. Now the word yours here in, in Greek means possess. That basically, for these things, you Christian possess. You possess them. This emphasizes that these qualities belong especially to the Christians. Are you with me? Okay. <laughs> now, again, the world must see these qualities in us and through us, especially Christians. You cannot just say, I'm a born again believer. Praise the Lord that you have faith in Christ Jesus our Lord. And yet, they don't see these attributes in you. Then they're kind of going, really? That's why Jesus said, you will know them by their fruits. And I'm like, wow, that makes sense. And James says, show me your faith and I'll show you my life. He says, wow, does that make sense to you now, Christian? Are you growing? Are you growing? 
and we'll see that in you. We will see in each and every one of us. If we're growing, we can say amen here all day. If I can, I, I will ask you this. Are you growing? Amen. Praise the Lord. You might be jumping. Amen. You know? And then, outside these walls, we will find out. Outside these walls, we will find out, brothers and sisters. Or maybe, we are not going to find out that for us, for us individually. But let me tell you this. Our God sees everything. Is this that thing or what? Amen. It's beautiful, folks. I just like, oh Lord. Because what I want for us Christians, we're not just going to be like a, those, oh, did I say those for giving them that mic? Erase that on the recording, okay? <laughs> you know, we just, we just don't want to be a Christian like, oh, okay, I'm a Christian, but yet there's no, the virtues that what we talk about, they're not there. It's important that people, they see that in us and through us. Can I hear amen to that? Amen. So now, for if these things are yours and abound, notice the word abound, it means more than in others. Now, let me tell you this. The reason why I believe the word abound is there, because other people, even non-believers, can exercise these things that we talk about. Do you believe me on that? They can exercise these seven, which I call Christian virtues. Can I mention a religion? Don't get mad with me. Buddhists can exercise these seven virtues. Om, peace, and all that. Muslim can exercise peace. But Christians, listen to me on this. They must see this in us more. This will... That, that's why uh, we're like a, a, when Jesus said, uh, let your light shine. That's why we are the soul and light of this world. Amen. They must see this in us more. That they will see patience in us more. Virtues in us more. Knowledge, self-control, godliness, brotherly kindness and love. They will see this in us. Because this should abound more in us Christians. Amen. Do you see that? Do you hear that? Do you hear the Holy Spirit speaking to you right now? So brothers and sisters, I believe for you in hearing this message this morning, this will change your view outside these walls. I believe that. I pray for that actually this morning. I pray for all of you and I ask the Father, I pray, Lord, that you Allow your Holy Spirit to convict us and challenge us in this message. Are you with me? Don't stop there. Don't stop your faith in Jesus there. You have to grow. You have to grow in grace. To grow in all these things. Amen. You will be. Now, if you have these things in you, and they are increasing more, you will be neither barren, the word barren there means idle, lazy, or useless. Are you with me? You will be neither useless, lazy, idle, nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 9. Now verse 9 here is the carnal Christian. The lazy Christian right here in verse 9. And the idle Christian, if you would. The immature one. The abnormal Christian. Are you with me? You don't want to be abnormal, right? But if you want to, just follow this verse 9. <laughs> Here's the recipe for abnormal Christian right here. Here's the recipe for carnal Christian right here. For he who lacks these things. What things again? The seven Christian virtues is short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his all sins. Oh my. Did you get that, folks? These are heavy, huh? Remember I told you, I warned you that... 
first and second Peter are heavy in doctrines. Heavy in doctrines. Now, for he, that is the Christian, who, how can I say this? A lazy Christian who doesn't who does not discipline himself <coughs> in exercising, if you would, or adding, if you would, to his faith these seven virtues. This is what, look at him. He who likes these things is short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his all sins. Now, listen to me here very carefully. The idea here is that a Christian would deliberately shut his eyes to what needs to occur in his life. See the word short sighted there? That is a myopia. I think something like that, like when your eyes, but the idea is this, you know what you're supposed to do, but you close your eyes as if like, I don't know. How many Christians are like that? Will you please raise your hands? Oh, please don't. You know what I mean? It's like, you know that you don't have to do that, or you know that you have to do that, but you're like, mm -mm. it's like, it's like this, it's like, you need the light. There's a light, but you're trying to ignore the light. Does that make sense to you? That is short-sighted, folks. Those are Christians that lacks these. And it, or he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Now, that doesn't mean he's not saved. He's still saved. He's a saved Christian. But the problem, he's not a growing Christian. And you don't want to be a Christian that is carnal, that is immature, that is not growing. And you, I think it's okay for me to ask you this. Have you seen a Christian, they, haven't, they have been Christian for a long time and still their baby? Oh, I hope there's none of you here in this room. I've seen Christian who grew up in Sunday school up to now, they're still baby. They're still a baby Christian. Little problem, see you later. See you later. And most of the time, no, no offense on this, okay? I'm not trying to offend nobody here. I'm just trying to give you the real, yeah, the real. Most of the time is this. When, when challenges come, they stop going to church. When there's some challenges in the church or in, in their fellow brothers and sisters, let's go out here. It's time for us to grow. It's time for us to grow. Guess what? There's no perfect church here in this world. I'm telling you that right now. Are you with me? Yeah. If there's a perfect church, I will not be here. I'll be attending to that church. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because there's no perfect church in this world. But we all go into that. But your duty is to grow. Focus on yourself. Don't focus on that. Focus on the Lord yourself in your walk, your relationship with Him. Make sure you're applying these seven things on top of your faith. Are you with me on that? Does that make sense? Oh. Don't worry, this message is for me. Ouch. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, God. Then it says, verse 10, Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent. Now, it says diligent on verse 5, right? Now it says, even more. You work more, you discipline more to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. Hallelujah. What is the solution for uh, tripping? If, let's say you trip a lot as a Christian. How many of you here Christians that trip a lot, that you stumble a lot? Okay, we got one. Two, three, four, five. Come on, 
the others, right? They stumble, they stumble a lot. Here's the solution right here in verse 10. Can you circle that verse 10? A solution when I stumble right there. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, if you apply these things into your life, you will never trip up or stumble. Now what Peter is saying here, or what he's encouraging here, that Christians, you are chosen and called by God. Say amen to that. Amen. You should know that now. God elected you, predestined you, and called you. He called you. He called you. That's grace. That is grace. He elected you, okay? So Christians, you are chosen and called by God, and the world should see this or these in you, in your life, that you are leaving these seven things on top of your faith in Christ Jesus. That's what his encouragement there, simply folks. And when you do this, there's bonus. You will prevent yourself from stumbling. If you just apply these, number one, I believe is this. You are letting your light shine in this dark world. You are becoming salt of this not so much savory world, <laughs> if you would. And folks, and when you apply this, you are not going to stumble because you are applying this. Notice it start on faith, the foundation, and it end on love. Did you see that? Oh, man. That's why Christians are loving people. Amen. I love you. Uh, <laughs> you know, you see that, right, brothers and sisters? Are you with me? Now, look at this. Verse 11, and we're done. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That is the ultimate reward there, brothers and sisters. Remember I told you, Christians, we have reward in heaven. For some are great rewards, it's plural. For some are just reward. Okay. Now, which one, which one do you like? I want to be rewarded. I want to enjoy a lot of rewards in heaven. Amen. Right? Or just enjoy reward. Which one? So, for so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly to the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The ultimate reward of a growing Christian or Christ honoring life is the person is the personal welcome by the Savior into his kingdom. Now what's that supposed to mean? Verse 11 what says simply here is this. Okay, uh, this is new, I'm not used to it yet. You know, when you die. If you live a life in this world and apply these seven things on top of your Christian faith, when you die, Peter is saying, the Lord will personally welcome you in heaven. And I get emotional just saying that. And you know, there is a homecoming, welcome home party, and the Lord standing right there. Welcome, my good and faithful servant. Oh, look at this. I can't wait for that day. But Lord, not yet. I want to see my grandchildren. You know. But I can't, but I can't go watch. Can you imagine? Pastor, is that biblical? Oh, yes, it's biblical. We know I'm there in heaven. There's some rewards waiting for you and me. Amen? But... Do you want to go home in heaven? Man, 
if Peter will open the door for me, I'm okay with that, I'm satisfied. But if Jesus will open the door of heaven for me and says, well, God is different, amen? 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 Isn't that amazing? Folks, did you know Stephen experienced that? You know, Stephen, in Acts chapter 7, and just look at the monitor up here. Let me prove it to you in the Bible, okay? Acts chapter 7, verse 54. When they heard these things. Now, by the way, Bible students, if you turn to, you, to if you turn your Bible to Acts chapter 7, you might want to take note of this. Stephen, or Stephen, <laughs> I call it Stephen, okay, was the first Christian martyr. Okay? The first Christian martyr, okay? Now what happened here in this story, he preached to the religious leaders of the Jews. He preached Jesus. Jesus Christ as the Son of God. And basically, he preached to them the gospel, the good news. Are you with me? Now look at verse 54. When they, the Jews, the religious leaders of the Jews, heard these things, they were cut to the heart, and they gnashed at him with their teeth. They're like, ah, really? Start your message? Instead of receiving the gospel, they rebel against it. They were mad to Stephen's message. We don't like that good news. Are you with me? And now look at this. But he, that is Stephen, now, how do you want it? Stephen or Stephen? 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 Okay, Filipina, Esteban. Okay. okay. But he, being full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Ooh. And said, he said, look, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice, stopped their ears, go, they go stop. And ran at him with one accord and they cast him out of the city and stoned him. Now this is a different stone, that stone like this. They stoned him, they stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at the feet of a young man named Saul. Well, Saul, that is St. Paul that we know. Okay? And they stoned Stephen, or Stephen, 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 as he was calling on God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out with a loud voice, Lord do not charge them with this sin. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. I don't know about you, I get emotional when I'm reading this. Brothers and sisters, are you with me on that? It's good enough that you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. But when you apply these things into your life, I want to die like that. I want to go home like that. That my last breath, ah, I see Jesus waiting for me, saying, my servant, well done. Here's your mansion. Enjoy your reward. I can't wait for that. Now it's up to you. It's not up to me. This is your own choice, brothers and sisters. Now, which one are you? Are you going to stay just Christian right there? Enjoy your faith in Christ and doesn't want to grow anymore? But basically what Peter is saying here is aim. Aim for that life. Aim for that life that God wanted you to live here on earth. To be an effective and a productive Christian. Are you with me? There's no lazy Christian, okay? I can tell. We're going to leave this church today very clean. <laughs> Amen. That's just a joke. Okay. We got it. We got it.
Come on now, am I too serious today? Forgive me, okay? But did you learn something though? Did you learn something? Did, did you want your last breath here on earth? And your first breath in heaven, Jesus waiting for you to receive? Opening the door of heaven, Jesus. Welcome, throwing a welcome home party for you and me, amen? When our day comes, that's what I want for me, Lord, and for my brothers and sisters as well. It's am not going to be selfish, you know. But if you don't want it, well, I'm just going to enjoy it then. Right? Are you going to be effective and productive Christians? All right. Are you growing Christians? You made that choice this morning with all these steps.